in the last lesson, I introduced you to the begin rescue statement method of handling exceptions. I want to cover a couple more points about begin rescue in a little more detail. So let's open a new program. We'll call it rescue.rb. Just to remind you of the two exceptions that we looked at, we had a divide by zero exception when you try to divide an integer by zero. And then we also had a file error. It really doesn't have a name when you try to open a file that doesn't exist. And these are the two examples. And then we could have a rescue to determine what to do. So if you remember, we had the user enter a denominator other than zero. And then we didn't deal with the file open error. Now, what I want to show you in this lesson is what happens if you have code that could throw multiple exceptions. So for example, if we had code similar to these two lines, but we wanted to handle the exceptions differently. For example, if we had these two lines right here, we could print that message when the exception is thrown and we would never get past this line. But what happens if we write this, or we have a situation where earlier lines don't throw an exception, but a later line does, and we want our exception to be particular to that error. In other words, we want the exception raised to match a rescue so that we can handle the code correctly for that particular exception. Well, we can do that. We can have multiple rescue clauses in our program, kind of like an if-else-if, if, so that if one situation doesn't match, you can try a different situation. And you can do that by naming the errors that could occur. So for example, for a divide by zero error, the error is zero division error. So when that situation occurs, we can handle it with this code. Let's run it and see what we get. There. When we tried to divide by zero, that threw the exception, and we handled it, and it displayed tried to divide by zero. We can have a second rescue like this. So let's change this to 3 divided by 1, which will not raise an exception. Then we're going to try to open a file that doesn't exist, and we should see this message. Let's give that a try. Right. First, it divided 3 by 1 to give us 3. Forgot to handle that correctly. And then it said something else happened. Now, that's not very specific, so we might want to put a specific error up here. Unfortunately, there's not a good specific error for a file not found because that's what's called a system dependent exception. But the general exception for that situation is this. And that will handle that particular error and then we could say, or something similar. Going back to this original error, when the exception occurs, you can also have the exception error message thrown into a variable. We'll call it oops. And then instead of having our own error message, we can just display what the exception sends us as the error message. So let's run this program again. And the official error message thrown by the zero division error is divided by zero. So that about wraps up this lesson. What I was trying to demonstrate to you is that you can have multiple rescue clauses in a begin rescue statement to handle all the specific exceptions that you can think of. And then you could even have another one right here, just a general rescue and some sort of handling. I'm being kind of facetious with these error messages, but you get the concept. So that wraps up this second part of handling exceptions. And now we're going to move on to the next lesson where we're going to learn how to raise our own exceptions so that when something happens in a program that we don't want to happen but is not considered a Ruby exception, we can still have our code throw that exception and then handle it appropriately. And we'll see how to do that in the next lesson.